Hello, welcome to Prime Sports with me, Rosak Musbao, and it starts with from the office of the president of the Ghana Football Association, Koet Ekreku, who says he is unfazed by the opposition of individuals seeking to contest the office of the president. Now, Koet Ekreku is currently in his fourth year as GFA president, and he believes his administration has delivered on the mandate handed to him and his hopeful members of the association will speak positively about it when the election is due. He has been speaking to Super Sports, Juliet Bewa. Thinking about elections, what I've said here is that football will speak, and football will speak, just like it spoke in 2019. What I know for a fact is that we have served football to the best of our ability, we were told when we went first to the classroom that there's 24 hours in a day, but football has taught us that, that there's more than 24 hours in a day. And we have worked more than 24 hours in a day throughout this period from 2019 up to today. And our people in the sport do appreciate our hard work. And we will continue to work until our time is up. So anyone who steps up, football will speak? Oh, football will speak. So anyone who steps out to football, challenge you? Football will speak. Yeah, I mean, f and football speaks all the time. Okay. What, what three things has this um, FA job taught you? Ghanaians love our football. Ghanaians have insatiable love for football. And if it is that you want Ghanaians to love you, you must ensure that their football steps up right. Is football stepping up right under your leadership? Football is not only stepping up right, it's stepping up right. What, what, what do you want to be remembered for as an FA president when you're no longer in this world? I want people in our sport, I said this at Congress, to remember Kurt for his honesty to the sport and for his honesty to the sport. That's it. On, on a scale of 1 to 100, how will you score your presidency so far? Well, I'm humbled that you've asked me this, but it's not for me to answer this. It's for the good people in the football industry, the direct uh, stakeholders who have given me the opportunity to serve, to, to be given the opportunity to ha have their own ratings. Um, and I think that if you reach out to them, a lot of them will speak. Away from that, now let me tell you the story of a 13-year-old Stephen Edu Jemfi, who thrilled fans in Kumasi with his dazzling skills and impressive ball control. His nicknamed Luka Modric, Stephen aims to play football to the highest level and someday be at the heart of midfield for Spanish giant Real Madrid. He even hopes to win AFCON for Ghana one day. Now, Lava FM Steven Zando spent time with him and came to with the story. The youngster with a big dream possesses skills that attract a number of spectators to the Adiababa Emmy Basic School Park every weekend. I did have a I didn't feel 30 years. Kumasi Crystal Palace Babies. We free take Aedrias. He plays for Kumasi Crystal Palace Babies, a juvenile football team based in the Ashanti regional capital, Kumasi. <laughs> Just 13 years of age and popularly called Adiababa Luka Modric, the boy, Stephen Adujemfi, is skillful, deft, and thus overwhelming things with football. He spoke a bit about himself when I visited him during one of his team's training sessions. I as a footballer and say, say me free Crystal Palace. I be say me team cover ball, I Ghana Black Stars. Now I'm put Afcon me team Buani team Gibi. And I think so we flew and I'm call Abuja, Real Madrid. Adujanfi explains how Croatian midfielder Luka Modric inspires him to play football to the highest level, don the Black Stars jersey, and in future help end Ghana's Afcon trophy drought. Stephen 
and I think so. We bought pasta, a seat with a music. Let me tell me about long range. The aim of every club owner at the grassroots level is to see the dreams of their kids' players come true. Football has become one of the most rewarding professions in the world and as a result, many kids dream to become professional football stars in future. That is why owner and coach of Kumasi Crystal Palace Babies, James Yolson, has tipped one particular star in his team, Adiababa Luka Modri, to take the country's football by storm. Football, eh, yeah, they are free much as you know, I know. say, Ocean Kola, Ubi Jom, Little Boom, maybe Louis, near the Abbey. And to miss me, I say, once I'm a boy, you be done, dear. You boom, and Palano. Now, Mr. Major, I'm sending a bay out, Pomonia Basabasa. Mr. T, a Juma, we send to Palace, and send to Palace, and send to Palace, and send to Palace, and Palano, if you are for me, some place with someone. We were Thomas Watt. Our boy Diana, number 27 GC, or a player, Fabracha Martin, ever book Master Christian Palace. Oh, John Otu, our call, National under 17. Fabracha Martin, the King West, you call them 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 King West, you in Denmark, yes. For Denmark, I could walk across and or return here back. Right now, no, I'm not sure about the US. If you think, say, a human eye, you know, so Abani Biana, so. I mean, by my own crime, it will be skills. I think the player was that strong. Hey, a big deal, big guy. A big deal. Best thing is, best skills, you know, 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 Maybe you begin a piano, the bony gin. I have found a woe who used to say, Boy, a bit more book book. You go by a minute, and say, or so a bob bone question of your crystal palace. When you are queen, you are a couple of black stars that I do them fear a star, men can a star because me, Timino, Mahuni said, or you're somehow them back for now in terms of formal category. No, a U13, a DJM fear exceptional. Then in the autonomy, I said, Bra, may a star. Mr. Mahuni said, no. And the parents also knew me say, a human or yen, obey to me a year, which almost the national yen, sir. They in the out to be a no, or more money talk, and send a bear on also in a talent and obey to me a pia one. Thank you very much. So um, I just spoke to the owner of Crystal Palace Babies Grassroots Football. This is where it all begins for all these youngsters you saw on your television screen. And then of course, we just hope that their talent will be harnessed and nurtured to be top footballers in the future. Perhaps play for the Black Stars, you know, one day to annex the Afghan trophy for this noble country. Some of them have already expressed their dream teams in, in, in Spain, in England, or what have you. They want to basically play for some of these top clubs in Europe. And we just hope that their talent will be trimmed, polished, refined. So then in the end, they will end up playing for some of these top clubs in England. Away from that, let's stay at uh, Juvenile Football because 32 teams will be involved in the 2023 edition of the Baby Jet and the 16 African Football Tournament to be staged at the Cape Coast Stadium from June 3rd to June 13th of this year. According to the founder behind the project, the founder of the project, Samoa Jan, among other things, the best performing talent will be selected to form a dream team which will be specially groomed for further development. People normally tell me, oh, you're a football player, why don't you do football and stuff? And I told them the right time will come. And um, I think four years ago, um, we started a Baby Jet and a 16 tournament and uh, we've um, produced a um, couple of players who are outside playing and hopefully we'll prepare them for, for Ghana as well. You know, this is what we're trying to do. We're trying to give back. And um, last four years was strictly by Ghana, Ghanaian teams. And a lot of people, um, a lot of teams from Ghana participated. And um, this year, we are trying to take it to um, the next level by looking at um, the sub-regions, you know, um, the countries uh, in Africa to also participate. And then um, after we have a dream team, we have a dream team, 
know, there will be a lot of scouts to, to scout players and um, everything. There will be a dream team. And then uh, we have um, a technical um, team from Ghana, <laughs> which I'm sure um, Lai Kingston will be among the technical team, or my colleague Steven Apia and everybody will be among the technical teams to make sure we manage well <clears throat> with, the, with the dream team. And then um, we can prepare them and then make sure they become great one day. At the same event, a former Black Stars player, Anthony Baffo, also called on the organizers to ensure proper management of the talents to be selected to form the dream team to ensure their success in the future. Talk about something we have experienced it before. So, um, you know, I always say there's no elevator to success. You have to take the stairs, you know, poco a poco. And um, they have to be well managed uh, for an agent who starts new who is only looking at the money and not at the development of the player, then there's a problem. His first mandate should be what is good at that very moment for this young player to establish himself. Sometimes um, we call it less is more. You go one or two steps back to jump higher. And this is what I would advise um, every player to, to really, really look at. If the team he has chosen would really help his development, and maybe you have chosen a very big team, but you will not play, and you rather regress instead of progressing. So um, managers, people who take care of them, mentors are very important for a young player to really um, have success in life. Maybe not tomorrow, but tomorrow next. Now away from that, former Ghana international Sami Kufo says Lofa Mathios played an instrumental role in getting him to sign for Bayern Munich. Now, Sami Kufo joined the Bundesliga heavyweight in the summer of 1993 after leaving Torino. The centre-back was moved to the first team a year later before joining Nuremberg on a season-long loan, after which he became a regular for the side between 1996 to 2005. Now speaking at an event at the German ambassador's residence on Tuesday night, Kufo narrated the role Luther played in his arrival at Bayern Munich. I have to give credit to this man. Luther, thank you so much for everything that you have done for me. I mean, people doesn't know this and it's very secret. When I got to Germany, I was training with the first team and he told me, you are good. I was feeling cold, so he has to go to Thief Garage and bring me clothes. And he takes me to shopping for two days, you know. And then Torino, I was coming from Torino. Torino won a big money, which was a half a million dollar, and which was 1993, Luther. 93. And Romanega didn't want to pay the money. And Luther said, okay, we know that the guy is good. If you don't want to pay, I am paying the money from my pocket to sign him. Wow. So when he developed, then you have to pay me 10 times. Oh, wow. Ah, big round of applause. That's, that's news. So, and then the buyer immediately, they signed me. And they, you they, were a teenager then? You were no, very young? I was very young. I was very young, but he saw the potential in me. And playing alongside him was a, was a dream come true. Because I, when I was young, watching him play in 1990, World Cup become the best player of the tournament, the World Player of the Year. And me standing the same training ground training with him, what blessing more did I need? I'm going to ask you, were you not, I know Sami Kufo has a big heart, and were you not at any time thinking, this is a bit, this is crazy, can I do it? Or you had that confidence? No, because I know where I'm coming from. I come from a very poor background. So I decided to kill myself for that moment because it's an opportunity that maybe not come again. And he helped me to achieve my dreams. And then Luther's. What did you see in Sami Kufo because, you know... Yeah, I see potential in him, like how I see now the pl players from uh, Agro Lions, a lot of potential. But this time I was a captain, I was uh, one of the oldest players in the team, and I know you need a support. When I come in the young age to Borussia München Gladbach, my first professional football club in Germany, 500 kilometers away from my home village, and I played before in the fourth division, and now I stay uh, with, uh, with in the team in the Bundesliga, I'm sure you need help. And I know it from my young age, 
how we support the players. I like to so give the support the same the, the players who come uh, in the young age to Bayern Munich and uh, I saw immediately a really potential in him and Bayern Munich really, uh, Uli Hoeneß and Karl-Heinz Rummig, it, oh, so much money, so I say, sorry, I really like to pay this and give it me back later or we, we share the next transfer, doesn't matter because I saw potentially he can help us, he can bring us to a higher level and he was working every day very very hard and later we we was profited from each other. He take the ball from the from the another team, give me the ball and I construct uh, Ghana. The country Ghana was uh, he was a good ambassador for, for in this time and he's still ambassador for Ghana in, in Munich and in Germany because everybody know him. Now, still at the event, the former Ballon d'Or winner, Luther Matthäus, criticizes former club's decision to dismiss former coach Julian Nigelsmann, insisting it is to blame for the team's failure to win any silverware this season. I think Bayern Munich made in the last 12 months a couple of mistakes uh, on the field, outside, around the field. L wrong decision, because for me, uh, I didn't understand till today why they changed the coach in a moment when they had the results. Sure, they was not playing excellent. But in the Champions League, they had eight games and eight win. And they was playing not against the second level teams in Europe, they was playing against Inter Milan, who are playing now in the Champions League final, two win. Barcelona with Lewandowski, two win. And against Paris Saint-Germain with Messi, two win. I didn't understand why they changed the coach, because sure, the coach has never all the team always all the players behind him because the players were sitting on the bench they're not talking nice about the coach because they like to play but Julian Nagelsmann is a young coach he can make mistakes he make mistakes but he needs the support from the CEO from the club from the sport director from the club and sometimes they give him to stay alone and this I think was the biggest mistake was, was Bayern Munich uh, doing two months ago when they changed the coach and you see the results Champions League goodbye German Cup goodbye and uh, we were talking about the Bundesliga title uh, to 99% uh, they will not win after 10 years the first time the title. But it's good for Bundesliga because uh, in our merchandising outside from Germany, all around the world, the people are happy to have this year till the end a, a big competition for the first place. And this was never ever happened in the last 10 years. And for this, it's good for Bundesliga. And I am happy, it's the same like a Bayern Munich icon when Borussia Dortmund will win this year because Bayern Munich didn't perform to win the championship in this season.